Uh, our uh, darshanit this morning is Cantor Rebecca Carl. Cantor Rebecca was born and raised in Austin, Texas and received her BA from Tulane University where she double majored in Jewish studies and psychology and minored in women's studies. From New Orleans, she moved to Israel where she began her studies at JTS with a year of learning at the conservative yeshiva in Jerusalem. Cantor Rebecca received her MSM in sacred music and investiture as a chazan from the H.L. Miller Cantorial School at JTS in 2008. She successfully completed a year long residency in clinical pastoral education at the Albert Einstein Medical Center here in Philadelphia. Uh, in addition to having had the privilege to serve congregations in Texas, Connecticut, New York, Delaware, North Carolina, and Philadelphia, Cantor Rebecca has had the opportunity to provide spiritual and pastoral care to patients, families, and staff at the Albert Einstein Medical Center. She's a board certified chaplain and currently serves as a staff chaplain at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. In addition, she teaches Gan at BZBI's Nesner Hebrew School and provides B'nai Mitzvah tutoring to many of our students. Cantor Rebecca also enjoys swimming, board games, musical theater, and improv. And it is with great excitement and anticipation that we look to you for this morning's Devar Torah. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, once upon a time, there was an officer of the law, a newly minted graduate of the academy. He was filled with pride, dressed in a crisp blue uniform and adorned with brass buttons. But the young officer was also filled with self-importance, arrogant and cold-hearted. One day while walking his beat, he heard a commotion in an alleyway. Stepping into the darkness, he saw a man dressed in rags. Come forward, he commanded, but the man did not come forward. I am an officer of the law and I command you to come forward. The man still did not move. Instead, he spoke. I just don't know what I'm going to do with you. Do with me, the officer replied. Do with me? You don't do with me. I do with you. I am an officer of the law and I order you to come forward. Ah, said the man in rags. Now I know what to do with you. And as he spoke, he drew his sword. Now I know exactly what to do. Without another word, he moved to attack. The officer drew his sword in defense. Stop that, he ordered. Put down your sword right now or someone will get hurt. The man in rags continued moving forward. Stop, he said again, but to no avail. And as the man in rags thrust his sword forward, the officer of the law responded in kind. In that moment, just as the young officer moved to attack, all became silent and still. Suddenly frozen in place, the officer could not move, but he could hear, and what he heard was the man in rags saying this, I am leaving you, but as I do, I place upon you the curse of blessings. The curse of blessings means that every day you must offer a new blessing, one you have never spoken before. On the day you do not offer a new blessing, on that day you shall die. And then all returned to normal, except the man in rags was gone. The officer of the law lowered his sword, wondering what had just happened, what he had seen and heard. I must have imagined the whole thing, he thought. It was late, the sun was setting, the officer felt his body growing cold. Did the man in rags really exist? Did he actually speak those words? Was the officer's life leaving him? In a panic, he blurted out a blessing. Thank you, O oh God, for creating such a beautiful sunset. At once, he felt warmth and life flow back into him. And he realized with shock and relief that this curse was real. The next day, he did not delay. Upon waking, he offered a blessing. Praise be the source who has allowed me to awaken this morning. His life felt secure the entire day. The next morning, he blessed his ability to rise from his bed. The following day, that he could tie his shoes. 
Day after day, he named features that he could bless, that he could take care of his body. He had teeth to brush. Each finger on his hands still worked. He had toes on his feet and hair on his head. He blessed his clothes, every garment, his house, the roof and floor, his furniture, every table and chair. One day, running out of blessings for himself and things, he began to bless others and relationships. He blessed his family and friends, his co-workers, and those who worked for him. He blessed the mailman and the clerks, the firefighters and school teachers. He was surprised to find that they appreciated his blessings. His words had power. They drew his family and friends closer to him. He became known as an unusual officer of the law, one who brought goodness and blessings with him wherever he went. Years passed and decades. He had to go further and further afield to find new sources of blessings. He blessed city councils, university buildings, scientists and their discoveries. He traveled throughout the world and grew in awe of its balance and beauty as he blessed that. He realized the more that he learned, the more there was for him to bless. His life was long and he had the opportunity to learn in every field. He passed the age of 100. Most of his friends were long gone. His time was now devoted to searching for his life's purpose and the one source from which all blessings flow. He had long since realized that he was not the origin, but merely the conduit, the channel, and even that realization was welcomed with a blessing that sustained him for yet another day. As he approached the age of 120, the officer decided his law life had been long enough. Even Moses had lived no longer than that. So on his 120th birthday, he decided he'd offer no new blessing and allow his life to come to its end. All that day, he recited old blessings and reviewed all the gifts he had received throughout his life. As the sun was setting, a chill settled into his body. This time, he did not resist it. In the twilight, as his breath grew shallow, a familiar figure appeared, a man in rags. You, whispered the officer, I have thought about you every day for a hundred years. I never meant to harm you. Please forgive me. You still don't understand, said the man in rags. You don't know who I am, do you? I am the angel who was sent 100 years ago to harvest your soul. But when I looked at you, so arrogant and cold, so pompous and full of yourself, there was no soul there for me to harvest. An empty uniform, that's all you were. So I placed upon you the curse of blessings, and now look what you've become. In an instant, the officer of the law understood all that had happened. Overwhelmed, he said, you are blessed, my God, ruler of the universe, that you have kept me alive and sustained me so I could attain this moment. The man in rags replied, now look what you've done, a new blessing. Life flowed back into the officer of the law, and he and the man in rags looked at each other, neither knowing quite what to do. Shabbat Shalom. This story, The Curse of Blessings, is one of my favorite stories. And when Rabbi Abe first asked me to give the Devar today, I hesitated, and then I read the first line of this week's Parsha, and I knew instantly that I wanted to share this story with all of you. This week's Parsha, Re'eh, begins with the words, Re'eh anochi noten lifnechem chayom bracha v'ka uklala. See this day I set before you blessings and curses. God through Moshe informs the Israelites they have a choice upon entering the promised land to live a life of blessings or a life of curses. They can choose to follow God's laws and commandments and reap rewards, or they can choose not to follow God's commandments and suffer negative consequences, hardships, distress, struggles, the curses. They are further told which laws to observe and which to avoid. Moses explains you should follow God's laws. Should you follow God's laws, you will be blessed more than all the peoples of the earth. However, if you worship false idols and ignore other commandments, you shall be cursed. 
The introduction to the Parsha focuses our attention on what is important, tells us the determining factor of whether we are blessed or cursed is dependent on our behaviors or actions. This seems simple enough, and yet, also throughout the Parsha, we see the phrase, usmach tem, cause them to rejoice, is repeated. After God tells us a series of things we should do, actions to do, we are then told we should come together and rejoice. We are commanded to celebrate, to bring people together, and make sure that the vulnerable are included. But how are we to think of rejoicing and celebrating now? These past five or so months, some might say that we have been living through a curse. This pandemic has created numerous challenges, struggles, and disrupted not only our day-to-day -day lives, but for many of us, our way of living. Many of us are unable to go to our offices. We no longer gather together in person. We are not physically together in our shul. We don't see many of our friends go to movies, theater, or simply have friends over for Shabbos dinner. It is easy to get caught up in the discomfort of wearing a mask all the time, constantly washing hands or sanitizing, and physical distancing. It's easy to lose sight of the blessings that continue to occur. The birth of a new baby, reconnecting with old friends, taking up new hobbies, finding more time to read, an evening at the beach, a long walk on a day with a cool breeze blowing on our face, or the rainbow after a rainstorm. But here's the thing. Jewish tradition teaches us that even, perhaps especially, during times of great happiness and joy, we remember the hard times, the suffering. So too, during times of distress or trouble, we must remember and look for the moments of joy, happiness, and blessing. As a chaplain at CHOP, it is not just my job, but a privilege and honor for me to be present with patients, families, and staff during times of great distress and suffering, as well as times of great joy and blessing, to hold space for and acknowledge these moments. Just this past week, at the end of a long visit with a family whose days-old child had received an unexpected and chronic diagnosis, the family asked me to pray in our prayers, we celebrated their gratitude and the blessing of the birth of their beautiful, precious baby. And in the same breath, we acknowledge the distress and struggle that they spoke of as they received the news of and began to process and understand their child's chronic diagnosis. So often, I see the ways that blessings and hardships coexist together in the same space and time not just at work, but also in my life. Many of you know, nearly five months ago, towards the beginning of this pandemic, my father passed away early in the morning of Sunday, March 22nd. What you might not know if you weren't with me that day was that same day, March 22nd, was also my nephew's third birthday, a day and time for celebrating and rejoicing even amidst the challenges, struggles, and grief. A week later, in the midst of sitting Shiva, we celebrated my sister's 21st, 25th birthday. And just a week ago, as I logged on to Minyan to say Kaddish, my family rejoiced when my sister gave birth to a healthy baby boy, my newest nephew. While my siblings and I are still in our year of mourning, and at times, the physical distance from my family in Texas has felt unbearably harsh. I am keenly aware of and recognize the incredible number of blessings that continue to surround me during this time. Blessings of amazing and incredibly supportive friends who have been by my side day and night. The ability to continue to connect with my family and friends and community virtually days at the pool, long walks, the cool evening breeze, 
sidewalk visits and popsicles with friends, virtual game nights, evenings at the beach, my continued health, and the health of my family and friends. Blessings big and small abound. The list is infinite. Often we read Re'e Anochi, the first verse of this week's Parsha, as a choice between blessings and curses. But perhaps instead we can understand it as encompassing both. God gives us both blessings and curses at the same time. Life is full of positives and negatives that exist simultaneously. We all have blessings for which we are grateful, and we all experience hardships and suffering. We don't get to choose only the good or only the bad. The curse of blessings, the, air, the angel comes to harvest the soul of the officer, but he finds nothing there to harvest. So he gives him this gift of curse of blessings, tells him there is one action he should do each day to offer a new blessing. The officer is hesitant at first, but as he begins to offer a blessing a day, his awareness of all the blessings in his life awakens and flourishes and changes who he is and how he views the world and is perceived. This pandemic life is what we make of it. Each day we can choose between focusing on the blessings or curses. As the name of the Parsha indicates, we are literally instructed to re'e, to see God's gifts and rejoice in our blessings. This opening verse encourages us to recognize and appreciate the blessings in our lives, especially at a time when we may be dealing with challenges and losses that would have seemed unimaginable a year ago. As we welcome the month of Elul this week and look forward and towards the high holiday season, may we all strive not to lose sight of the countless blessings in our lives and may we continue to seek out ways in which to rejoice in and celebrate them. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom and Yishar Kochech.